pretty worried that I might have COVID. Oh my god. That's so claustrophobic. <laughs> beep beep boop. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Kate and Z and, and other, other adventures. adventures and we're on an 81 day van life road trip through the USA. Swamp, 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 swamp. Welcome to Florida, the sunshine state, or should I say the swampy state. It smells so bad. I think this is swampland, it's just standing water everywhere. Oh yeah, it does smell like salty. Florida is very swampy. Yeah, oh I think it's gosh. the most swamp land of almost anywhere. Florida is the boating and fishing capital of the world. I can also try a crocodile meat here. I've already eaten crocodile meat. I haven't had alligator meat. Maybe they taste very different. When I googled what to eat in Florida, one of the things that came up on top was gator bites. And then I googled the best place to have it, and it is here. Florida seafood. Oh. This dish has an optional gator head, but I have to pay like $11 extra for the gator head, so I'm like, no. And that's the gator tail, the pieces. I guess it comes with onion rings. It's so much chewy. It has like dark meat consistency. You know how I remember crocodile meat? It's a mix between squid and pork. And now that I'm eating this again, it just has the texture of pork. But with the squid flavor! That's exactly how I remembered it! What do you think? It really just tastes like meat to me. There's it's no so interesting, that. right? It's an experience, you know? You don't eat it every day. So would I recommend it? Yeah, because it's um, a specialty here. Would I eat it every day? No. <laughs> Same. <laughs> and now, we're heading to... Kennedy Space Center. I was really expecting something more like... <clears throat> Kennedy Space Center! Kennedy Space Center was named after President John Kennedy after he declared in 1961 that the U.S. would put an astronaut on the moon. To achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. And ever since, it has been the launch and research facility of NASA for all of its space programs. It is also where the historic lunar launch of Apollo 11 happened in 1969. One of its most notable and iconic attractions is the VAB, Vehicle Assembly Building. As the name suggests, it is basically where the rockets are made and assembled. I think because there's so much history there, I've always wanted to go and visit and see what it's like to be an astronaut. Look no further, Z, because we're here! Dude, this is like the Disneyland entrance, you know, but for space stuff. <laughs> Even the music! <laughs> Kiosk looks like the old space shuttle uh, propellant tanks. Oh yeah. Rocket booster. First up, the Rocket Garden, where you can see some of the rockets from NASA's Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo programs. Even though all of them have never been used for flight to space, it was mind blowing just seeing them up close and admiring the sheer size of these rockets. Z's checking out a re-entry capsule. It's the part of a space capsule that returns to Earth after a space flight. Would you like to spend 15 days in here? Uh, how about no? This space shop is the world's largest store devoted to space memorabilia and NASA gear. Obviously, we had to step foot inside this massive 15,372 square foot shop. So where's the SpaceX stuff? Uh, probably not here. Oh, that's sad. Oh, look, it's an astronaut cup. Which you can also get at AliExpress for like three bucks. Conveniently seated right across the space shop is Orbit Cafe. Let's go check it out. Because we're touring during low season, a lot of things weren't open, so we got a pretzel to share. We even shared it with the birds. <laughs> this is NASA's new initiative. Basically, everything's been delayed. Technical difficulties. Right. You know, SpaceX is basically taking over all of this. Uncle Z, do your little oh, SpaceX X dance. Okay, don't dance, don't dance. Look, it's the Falcon 9! That's right. That's the one we have driven all the way here to see, okay? We will not leave until we see it. But if we don't, I'll just let Zenus reminisce the time I made a Falcon Heavy pinata for his birthday. For now, let's go see the Saturn V rocket launch in the Firing Room Theater. We're facing the actual consoles used during the Apollo launches. You are now in the final minutes before the launch of Apollo 8. Right here, where it actually happened. 
and even felt the powerful Saturn V moon rocket lift off from the launch pad. Now let's go see the real thing. So this is the actual rocket that and it just didn't fly, but it's here so we can now enjoy it. Wow! Oh my god! You can imagine you are just one of the small humans at the very top of this 36-story rocket. It's... Are you crying? Oh it's so cool! Venus. Oh my baby, it's so happy! Humans are there, and then you have the lander. This is like all of your equipment space. It's a three-stage rocket. You have the very first stage, like way at the back, and yeah. then you have the next stage, yeah. and then you have the third stage here. Basically, each stage is just a massive amount of fuel with a rocket engine. It is incredible that it takes this much energy. Think of all the energy that you have back there just to get you to the moon. Like it's a lot of force just to put a few women uh, around them. It really made me emotional thinking about how difficult it is for humanity to get beyond our current planet and how much effort it takes in order to do that. I think it's just remarkable. And then being able to see this rocket, which is the Saturn V rocket, it's just so incredibly massive, so complex. Saturn V is the largest rocket that launched humans to the moon. With the length of 363 feet, it is about the height of a 36-story building. Its success story happened way back in 1967 during the Apollo 4 mission. The Saturn V rocket successfully launched 12 missions for Apollo and one to place the Skylab space station in orbit. As much as Z is super into space stuff, he is way more interested in what SpaceX is doing. I think the important thing to realize is that the rocket that SpaceX is developing right now is the same size as the rocket that you see behind me. They are creating a reusable rocket. They'll launch, they'll come back down, refuel, and they'll launch again. It is an incredibly hard thing to do because of all the logistics involved. Mainly the heat of re-entry is so intense that it's really hard to bring something like a rocket back down safely. And so I am watching every single launch because I want to see if he can do it. I just touched the moon! <laughs> so apparently this little piece of rock is older than 99.99% of all surface rock on Earth. Okay. Touch again, uh. <laughs> Yeah, I'm touching the universe. <laughs> oh, wow. That's so much room. It would be perfect for us to live in this van, huh? Let's commandeer it. It's ours now. Oh, that's the hatch that you would slide into. Yeah. This hatch was redesigned because of the tragedy. They weren't able to get it open quick enough during the fire. No. How long did it take to open? The first one was 90 seconds to open. The redesigned one was five seconds. Wow. Y'all know what else is wow? The queue to see the Atlantis space shuttle. But good things come to those who wait, right? 33 missions, 26 years, over 126 million miles. Atlantis. Check this out. I did not see this coming. That's where we came from. I thought it was just like a theater movie or what. When it opened up and I saw this giant spacecraft, that was mind blowing. This telescope has allowed us to peer further into space than we ever have before. Wow. And if you've never seen the images from the Hubble Space Telescope, please just check them out online. They're truly breathtaking. Can you imagine how terrifying that would be? You have just a little backpack with some jets and you're floating completely free in space. It's just so much to learn and so much to see. I've learned so many things that I didn't even, I mean, I couldn't even fathom. <laughs> I think this is nicer in zero G. My knees hurt. Oh man. It'd be so much nicer on our knees if it was zero G. There's just so much to experience here at Kennedy Space Center. Like this eight minute shuttle launch simulator we're about to go on. I wasn't able to film the process, but someone else on YouTube did. This is what we were facing. 
And this is how it was moving. As you can expect from a motion simulator, a lot of shaking. So just don't eat a full meal before this and you're good. All the men and women of NASA, thank you for joining us on this adventure today. Now, whenever you see a space launch, hopefully you will remember your experience here today. What would you say are the highlights for you? Oh, definitely the spacecrafts that have flown and then come back to mm. Earth. How about you? Being able to see the sheer size of the rocket in person, because there's some rockets, like the ones behind us, that don't feel that big in person. Then you get to see something like the Saturn V and you're just like, yeah. whoa. I can't wait to see SpaceX, actually. Really? I mean, is it rivaling this place to be run? Okay, we're not running, but we're taking a bus to finally see the Falcon 9 launch that Zenus has been eagerly waiting for. On our way there, Zenus made friends with a guy called Brian, another SpaceX fan, no less. And they're geeking out about Elon Musk right now. We managed to get top seats on the bleachers. Woo! So that's where it's launching. A Canaveral Falcon 9 rocket. It's about 229 feet tall, 70 meters and it's carrying 48 Starlink satellites. Starlink Woo! is the uh, SpaceX uh, satellite system. After tonight's launch, it'll be about 1,800 of those satellites. Wow. Starlink is a satellite internet constellation that provides internet access to almost all of Earth, even the most rural parts, which is why I am so supportive of the efforts of Elon Musk. He is making connectivity easier for the world and making a difference by helping poor third world countries gain access to the internet and ultimately to education. At this point, we were feeling so lucky because it was such an ordeal to get here. Let Zenas tell you why. Originally, it was scheduled on the 4th of December. It was moved forward to the 30th, then removed to the 1st. Now it's finally removed to the 2nd. And the time window keeps shifting a bit. We don't know if it's actually going to launch. It seems like there's a good possibility that it'll launch tonight. And that's what's going to happen in 30 minutes. It's finally happening. How do you guys feel? 10 minutes to launch. Oh, I'm, so I'm breathing excited. deeply. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know if I'll get any tears or not because I, I waited a long time for this. Oh. Yeah, same for me. Two minutes, Z. How do you feel? I'm so nervous. They turned off the light so we can see better. What is so amazing about the Falcon 9 rocket is that the booster comes back down to Earth to land. SpaceX makes the most sustainable rockets in the world. It's so amazing to see one of these launches in person. Just the atmosphere of the people around you, it really is an amazing and emotional experience. If you get the chance to see a rocket launch in person, don't pass it up. That very night we returned to the van, Zenus fell sick. So as you can probably hear, my voice is a little bit hoarse, so I'm pretty worried that I might have COVID. I just did a rapid test. 15 minutes later. I guess you're negative, which is good. I'm a very positive person. Why would you say <laughs> something like that? Okay, we're positive that you doesn't have COVID. I also think it's because you never sleep now. Yeah, I had a couple of really bad nights and yeah. I think that just made me more susceptible to what, anything, what happened. anything, yeah. to catch anything. Remember to get enough sleep, guys. We initially wanted to get to Portillo's while we were in Chicago. Remember the episode where we show you the best deep dish pizza? But two deep dish pizzas were more than enough for two people, trust me. So when we discovered that Portillo's opened an outlet in Florida, we knew we had to get it there. Zenas's half-sister Pam placed an order for us to pick up and bring to hers, so that's what we did. Oh yeah, a little context. Z's family found out about their half-sister Pam just a couple of years back, and she lives in Florida. So since we're here, we decided to visit her and her family. A cheeseburger. Oh, is that your fave? I love cheeseburgers. They're How about you, Catalina? What do you get? How about you, Gigi? What is this? Uh, that? Okay, you can say it for her. That's a hot dog. Is it the best hot dog in the world? It's very tasty. That's what I hear. Lots of stuff on That's it. what Pickles, I hear. Pickles, pickle relish, tomatoes. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> Give it the respect it deserves. Go for it. Mm-hmm. Mm, my turn, my turn. Good stuff. Oh, the dog has the skin and everything, so it has a really good texture. Yes. Did you understand any of that? You like it? I love it. It's so good. Thank you for the recommendation, Pam. What is this? That's a 
beef sandwich with sweet pepper. Oh yeah, that's the other thing in Chicago that was yeah. famous. Oh yeah. Damn, this is so good. And you can bet that we all stuffed our faces good that night. It's always great having food with family. Little Gigi enjoyed her time with us so much, she started packing her clothes so we would bring her along. So cute, huh? Florida is known for its theme parks, but for now, it will be known to us for its space stuff and family. Unlike Zenas, I had very little interest about space stuff. It was only now that I realized what a big deal space travel and Elon's mission was to Z. I guess I really wasn't paying enough attention to what sets its heart on fire, which in this case is the rocket engine of a spacecraft. So I guess my advice would be, if you're in a relationship too, remember to pay attention. The most wonderful thing you both decided to do was to share your life with each other. And it is by participating in your relationship that you breathe life into it. How do you feel about watching a rocket launch, Z? It's something that I always wanted to do and now finally being able to do it. It's just, it's really cool to be able to do this in person and to share it with you. I'm just so happy to share our special moments with you guys. So remember to subscribe and continue joining us on our adventures. Oh, remember to like this video as well and hit the notification bell to show your support. And we'll see you next in New Orleans. I'm glad I've never had turtle soup. There is a story about vampires surrounding this church. Oh, these are the three biggest ones in this cemetery. He's gonna take your man parts if you go too close to the building, you know.